Mrs. Austin made sure Jane didn't miss a single opportunity to catch her husband. local balls and parties she found herself thrust into a social battlefield where the bloodiest campaigns were waged in the war to find the ideal spouse. Very quickly Jane found herself at the front line. A handsome young Dubliner soon made his advance. My dear Cassandra, I am almost afraid to tell you how my Irish friend and I behaved. Imagine to yourself everything most profligate and shocking in the way of dancing and sitting down together. He is being laughed at about me. She's the prettiest, silliest little husband-hunting butterfly I ever remembered. This bad behaviour was carried on with a dazzling stranger, Tom Lefroy. He was 20 years old, the same age as Jane. He had a law degree from Dublin and was preparing to study for the bar in London. Meanwhile, he was enjoying a holiday with his aunt Lefroy, a neighbour of the Austins. He is a very gentlemanlike, good-looking, pleasant young man, I assure you. I can expose myself, however, only once more, because he leaves the country soon after next Friday, on which we are to have a dance at Ash. I was away from home, staying with my Tom's family, when Jane's letter reached me. After the first mention of Tom Lefroy, he kept making more and more appearances. She couldn't keep him off the page. After I had written the above, we received a visit from Mr. Tom Lefroy. He has but one fault, which time will, I trust, entirely remove. It is that his morning coat is a great deal too light. Jane did not even try to conceal her delight in her new friend. Every sentence of her letter spoke to me of her happiness and confidence that he was forming a deep attachment. I rather expect to receive an offer from my Irish friend in the course of the evening. I shall refuse him, however, unless he promises to give away his white coat. As for my other admirers, I mean to confine myself in future to Tom Lefroy, for whom I do not care a sixpence. We could all see what had happened. The whole neighbourhood was whispering of an engagement. It was out of the question. Jane is a dear, dear girl, and I fear that Tom behaved very ill towards her. There was no fortune on either side. He should not have raised her hopes when he was in no position to support a wife. He knew his father wanted him to make a good marriage. I sent him back to London to continue his studies, so no more mischief could be done. It was for the best. At length, the day is come on which I am to flirt my last with Tom Lefroy. And when you receive this, it will be over. My tears flow as I write at the melancholy idea. Jane joked about it, but it had been a painful experience. She'd let her feelings show. A mistake. She learnt that young men can be most dangerous when they are most entrancing. Webby! Jane uses this knowledge from then on in her writing. In Sense and Sensibility, Marianne Dashwood learns this bitter lesson when she's dumped for a wealthier catch. Good God, Willoughby! How do you do, Miss Marianne? Willoughby, what is the matter? Why have you not come to see me? Were you not in London? Have you not received my letters? Yes, I had the pleasure of receiving the information you were so good as to send me. For heaven's sake, Willoughby. Tell me what is wrong. I think you are most obliged. You 
Excuse me, I must rejoin my party. Women fancy admiration means more than it does. And men take care that they should. We are not rich enough or grand enough for them. I believe young Lefroy was still in her thoughts three years later when he turned up at Ash again. His aunt kept him well away from us and said nothing of the visit, but in our small society. Jane was bound to hear of it. She was too proud to ask about him. So I took it upon myself to question Mrs. Lefroy, and she told me he'd already gone back to London on his way to Ireland where he was called to the bar. Soon after this, Tom Lefroy made his good marriage to an Irish heiress. He rose to be Lord Chief Justice of Ireland and a very pious gentleman. A young man so easily falls in love with a pretty girl for a few weeks, and when accident separates them, so easily forgets her. We live at home, quiet, confined, and our feelings prey upon us. Men are forced into exertion. Men have always a profession, pursuits, business of some sort or other to take them back into the world. We certainly do not forget them so soon as they forget us. Questioned by a nephew at the end of his long life, Lord Chief Justice Lefroy acknowledged he had indeed loved Jane. With Tom Lefroy behind her, Jane threw herself into her writing. Here at least she was in charge of the fates of her heroines. She found the perfect workplace in the dressing room she shared with Cassandra. I remember it well. The scanty furniture and cheaply papered walls. The blue and white striped curtains. And how Aunt Cassandra would shut the door quietly and glide away, making sure she was left alone with her thoughts and her pen and paper. 